Hello and welcome back. I've got a bonus video for you today. Now, if you saw the last video, I gave you an up close look at our Summer Bloom stamp set, which is releasing in June of 2016. So I showed you all of the ins and outs of this set and I promised you a look at how to create an all over background using just the smaller images in the set. So that's what we're going to look at today. Now you can create as much or as little of this pattern as you'd like. I'm gonna demonstrate it uh, going down the right side of my card. I want the pattern to go around my sentiment. I don't want to obscure it, so I'm using a little pre-planning here, deciding where I want to put my sentiment. Now, if I had my Misty stamping tool, this would be super simple. I would just place my stamp, pick it up at the door, and stamp it down. But I know a lot of you don't have the Misty stamping tool yet, so this is the old school way. I just used a T-square ruler to give me a straight line and marked it off with my pencil. Now I have a great guide for stamping that sentiment and I'll make sure that it's straight since this is going to be on the same layer as my pattern. I'm gonna stamp that in our black dye ink and this is my favorite black ink. It's nice and crisp and super black. And now I'm going to use the baseline of the letters and line that up with the pencil mark that I've already put on the paper. And this will give me a nice straight sentiment. One of the forgiving things about the sentiments in this set is the baseline of all of the letters is just a little bit different than the next. So it actually is very forgiving if you don't get it exactly straight. Uh, but you do, if it's going like crazy uphill or downhill, you're going to be able to tell. <laughs> All right, so since I don't want my pattern to obscure my sentiment, I'm going to start building my pattern from the sentiment out. And I like to start by stamping my stems first and then adding in the flower head or bud. Now, when I create my little flower sprigs, I like to have each of the flowers flowing away from each other uh, instead of going in toward each other. I don't want them to create arcs or circles visually. I want them to continue to lead the eye out and around the pattern. So each flower will swoop in and then away from each other. I'm gonna continue building this up and I'm stamping all of the stems and the leaves and these little receptacles. I'm, I'm, never, I'm never gonna not call it a receptacle now that I took the time to look it up and find out what that was called. <laughs> the little bulb at the end of the flower, it's the receptacle. I've, I feel like it's the word of the day now. <laughs> so I'm stamping all of those in last leaf. And then I'm stamping the base flare layer of the flower in our Flamingo ink. Now you don't have to keep adding layers. Like I mentioned in the last video, these stand well just like this. You could leave it just like this and it looks great. However, this is a building stamp set, so there are additional layers that you can use. You wanna use colors that are at least two shades apart when you're doing uh, the two layers on the flowers. For ours, I'm using the Flamingo, and then I'm filling in the center with our uh, Miami Spice. And here, it's going to look like they're not that different, but you'll notice as our inks dry back, they cure, get a little bit lighter, so you'll be able to visually see a, a good difference between these two colors. You'll also notice that they look like they're stamping a little splotchy right now, but again, that's just the formula of our inks. They continue to absorb into the paper and smooth out as they fully dry. They are completely dry to the touch immediately once you stamp them. However, they are still wet in the core of the paper. So for example, if you wanted to emboss with these inks, you could sprinkle clear embossing powder on it after you stamp it, and the embossing powder would adhere to the ink and you could emboss it. So that's just one of the great things about this ink. It's dry to the touch, but it's still just wet in the core of that paper, so it will hold embossing powder. So I'm gonna to continue to build out my pattern here. And again, I'm adding each layer, and I'm using all of the layers that would make up these flowers. Again, I can't stress it enough. You don't have to use every layer. In fact, I'm looking at it, I'm going, ooh, I think I wanna do this again in different colors and just use the um, base of the flower. I think that would be really pretty. The stems also can be used either direction. You'll notice that it tapers. However, you can use it upside down or right side up, it doesn't matter. It looks just as good. You can see here in the sample that I've stamped out so far, sometimes I've used it with the fatter end at the top toward the head of the flower, and sometimes I've used it with the skinnier edge toward the head of the flower. So I'm just gonna finish up this pattern, and then I'm gonna fill in with a couple of the little dots that are included in the set. Just sprinkle them around to fill in some of those bare spots and just make this look a little more like a retro pattern because I'm in love with retro florals. I <laughs> just love them, I can't get enough of them right now. And again for that, I'm using the Miami Spice to tie in the Miami Spice from the flowers. 
Now my original plan was to leave it like this. However, this is where you guys get to see me make um, like kind of a, a pinch hit. <laughs> I'm making a pinch hit here. I didn't like the, um, the, it was violating, like completely violating the rule of thirds for me and it just was killing me. I couldn't take it. So I decided to offset it to the right on a separate layer. So I trimmed off that left edge with our scallop border die and I'm going to try to make this a little bit thinner. Um, I, I, maybe I should have done this on like a five by five card because the size of the sentiment, this is a good size sentiment, nice and bold. So here you can see it's taking up half the card and dividing the card in half is just, it's a design no-no for me. <laughs> just for me personally. You can see I'm sitting here thinking about it. I'm like, what can I do? This is killing me. It should take up a third, not a half. Um, so you can see I've gone off and I'm like, I'm cutting another card base because this was at four and five and a half. So I cut a four and a quarter and I'm hoping that extra quarter inch helps. And actually it does. It it made it to where it wasn't, it wasn't just devastating to me. Um, you'll also see I try it behind a coral color cardstock. I'm trying to shift it, move it around, see if I can still get it to work. I am a stickler when it comes to composition. You guys have seen me wing it with watercolor. You've seen me be like, ah, that color landed where I didn't want it. Oh, well, that works for me. The breaking point for me is the layout, the composition. That It has to be in exactly the right spot. And I know that sounds crazy, but everybody's got their thing, right? Some people, it's embossing powder has to be super duper clean and you can't have any stray embossing powder. Me, I'm like, meh, who cares? But when it comes to like, uh, yeah, the the focal point has to be in exactly the right place. The composition has to be exactly right. Uh, you don't always have to follow the rule of thirds, but when it's something this simple, it's it stands out to me if it's not. So we all have our OCD issues and maybe that that's my one. For me, it's composition. So I decided to, at the in the end, just use that coral on the right side of the card. And then I adhered all of that with some 3M foam, foam tape and then added some enamel dots. And I could, this one, I could live with it. <laughs> I felt like I saved it pretty well, even though it's still taking up way too much. <laughs> now it's just time to add that sentiment to the inside of the card. And I'll be using the stamp press to do that. So I'm just going to line it up where I want it on my card. And then I'm just going to pick it up on the stamp press. I'll link that up with some black ink and then just press down to stamp. Now you'll notice my impression's not perfect. Again, this is one of those times where I'm like, meh, it'll do. <laughs> so that will finish up the card. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and this closer look again at the Summer Bloom stamp set. Remember, it will be available at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers beginning June 5th of this year, 2016. So thank you, thank you for watching. I will have all of the links in the description box below and I will see you next time. Bye.